animal, like a 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 animal. I'm getting out today, out of rehab, and I'm scared. I don't know if my friends and family will talk to me anymore. I want to be able to tell them that it wasn't me. It was the drug, methamphetamine, that took over my life and turned me into someone I didn't even want to know. I've been here for almost 18 months. I tried rehab once before, but it was only for 21 days, and that wasn't long enough. Not with this drug. I hadn't even detoxed in 21 days. I wasn't eating or sleeping in any regular way, and I was back on the stuff within days. This is a new place, just for meth addiction. I came here to relearn how to live. My folks had to refinance their house to pay for it, but it gave me my life back. I'm eating right, I can sleep again, and I'm part of my own recovery process. I want to have a purpose again. For the past half year, the staff here has been my friends, my teachers, and my support. But today, that all ends. They all wish me luck. They want me to make it, but I know behind their smiles and well wishes, they're worried. The statistics aren't good for getting off meth and staying off. Meth has been around for a long time, but the stuff out there now is a new variation. It's 90% pure. It immediately hooks you. It's a drug that takes control and keeps control. Once you've crossed the line and tried it, you can never go back. I can never go back. I can't ever go back to exactly who I was before and pretend that I didn't have the experience. And now there's not a day that goes by and I don't think back on how this all happened. I was just a regular kid, a freshman in high school. I had friends, a job, there wasn't anything special about me, but then I started to feel the pressure of high school. Not getting enough sleep, worrying about my grades, just wanting to cut loose. I would heard about this drug, methamphetamine, though I would heard it by its other names, glass, ice, crystal, quartz, even once I heard it called fire. I had heard it gave you a great rush and a high you wouldn't forget. You could get all the energy you wanted, feel like you could do anything and you'd never be hungry. It was a great way to lose weight. I just wanted to try it and see if what they said about it was true. It was easy enough to find, all I had to do was ask around. I didn't tell my friends I was interested because I didn't want them to try and talk me out of it. It was easy to get the first time. They almost give it away. They know once you've tried it, you're hooked. I got into a huge fight with my best friend. He said I was crazy to try it. I didn't like the idea of anyone telling me what to do, so I walked out. His girlfriend was one of the lucky ones. She listened to him. I didn't. All I wanted was to try it once, to find out for myself what it was like. I wasn't going to get addicted, I just needed a boost to get me through the tough time. Exams, work, all the pressure. I just wanted to try it and see if it would help. I didn't think anything terrible was going to happen, just from trying it. The rush was incredible. Within seconds, my pulse rate and temperature shot through the roof. Suddenly, I was higher than I ever could have imagined. That was the problem. Once I had experienced that feeling, I wanted it. Again and again. And it took more and more of the drug to get me there. The drug took over my life before I had a chance to choose. While those who sell meth will tell you about the high, no one mentions what you're going to feel like as you come down. Nobody mentions the crash. It's horrible. Worse than anything I've ever experienced. I went to bed for days. I didn't care about anybody or anything. If I was awake, I just thought of how I could get more. Otherwise, I was in a coma-like sleep. I lost my friends and my job, but some of the people I met in rehab had kids. When they crashed, their children had to take care of themselves. Eventually, they lost everything too, including their kids. In only a few weeks, my life became hell. People were just things to be used. I hated everything I used to love. I was paranoid and I'd go off on anyone, even friends and family. If someone didn't have meth or use it, they were nothing to me. I started to imagine shadow people coming after me and the bugs crawling under my skin. Sometimes I thought I actually saw the bugs and I tried to claw them out of my arm. The sores wouldn't heal because I didn't eat. All I had in me was the poison. By the time I was finished with a three-week binge on methamphetamine, I had become a very dangerous person. 
I no longer had any human qualities, except maybe that I looked like one. But even that would have disappeared if I kept using it. My body would have eaten itself up from the inside out. One woman I met in rehab was down to 90 pounds. She had open sores that wouldn't heal, and she had lost most of her teeth. She terrified me every time I saw her walking down the hall. If I had kept using it, I would have ended up looking like that too, not even looking human. I learned a lot about the environment while I was in rehab too. I had to laugh at myself. I used to care about ecology. I'd get mad at big business and huge corporations that would spit their garbage out into the air, or pour their sludge into the rivers, or dump their waste into the ground. God, I was such an idiot. I had no idea what crap went into making meth. I had no idea that I was part of the pollution mess that was ruining the earth. I just had no idea. Meth starts with a base of Sudafed. You know, the drugstore stuff, for a common cold. Meth cooks go in and buy or steal 20 or more packs at a time. No one tried to stop them. Nobody had to show their ID or sign for anything. Then they'd start mixing and cooking. They'd add kerosene, charcoal fluid, Drano, lye, red phosphorus from matches, lithium from batteries, antifreeze, paint thinner, even gun cleaning solvent. All stuff you can easily buy in a hardware store. All of these things are toxic chemicals. They all contaminate the air, the water, and the ground. Working anywhere near toxic junk means you have to be protected from touching or breathing it. But that's not how meth cooks get rid of stuff. They just dump it. And for every pound of meth produced, there's five to six pounds of toxic waste they have to get rid of. Wherever they make or dump meth becomes, literally, a hazardous waste site. Toxic chemicals are rated from one to six on how fast they can kill a human being. A number one isn't very toxic you'd get sick before it would kill you. A number six is super toxic. A few drops or a taste can kill you. Methamphetamine is mostly made up of fours, fives, and sixes. All of those ingredients can kill a person or poison the earth. And then a meth cook heats them up and cooks them all together. You can't miss the smell. It's like a huge cat litter box that nobody ever cleaned. It's so toxic it affects everyone who comes in contact with it. Police, fire, roadway workers, neighbors, and especially children. And that's if the meth lab doesn't blow up. You can't mix and heat all those chemicals without the risk of explosion. They happen all the time. And sometimes, the firefighters don't know it was a meth lab till later. By then, they've already been breathing and touching the stuff. This drug affects everyone, from arrest to medical problems, from fire to the environment, from increased crime to child neglect and abuse, it's devouring our community's resources. And economically, communities are already struggling. There's just not enough money for everything anymore. But I didn't know all this before. All I wanted to do was try it. The most important thing I learned in rehab was how meth affected my brain and body. I wish now I had paid more attention in health class.